Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day um, to be here. I know we're all very busy, but um, I promise it'll be relatively quick. Um, so we will just get started. And like I said before, um, I'll send out this PowerPoint afterwards. So don't worry about taking notes. And then if you have any questions, we'll have some time at the end or you can throw them in the chat box. So. Um, so congratulations, you've all been matched. It's very exciting. Um, so we're, we're gonna actually email you your match information on Monday, Monday or Tuesday this upcoming week. So you're not gonna get it today. Um, there's a reason behind it, we'll go into it. So know you have a match and know that it is relevant to um, what you indicated your interests are on your application. So um, before the shadow, we ask, that you contact your host within two weeks of receiving their contact information. So you'll get it on Monday in an email, and then we ask that you just reach out to them um, with you know, a little intro about who you are, what you are planning on going into, and then some availability. Again, I'll go into that in a little bit, um, but we just ask you make contact with them within those two weeks because once two weeks have passed, you're gonna get another email from us with a link to a Google form. And then the form is just going to be like a few questions, um, basically letting us know if you have contacted your match, when have you guys, or if you've arranged already a day and time to connect. Um, it's just gonna be a way to make sure that all of our students have you know, gotten in contact with their hosts. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of difficulty in getting in contact with them. So we just wanna make sure that everyone has connected with them. And obviously, if you haven't, please let either myself or Natalie know, um, and we can you know, connect you both with an email or something. So, so you'll get your match information on Monday, and then you're gonna have to contact them within two weeks from that Monday. So when you are reaching out to your match, I think an email is probably the easiest way to do it. So you just wanna include your name and let them know you're participating in the Job Shadow Program. Maybe include a couple of sentences about your career goals or what you're studying or what you're interested in. Um, and then from there, you're gonna try and figure out what day and time would be best to hold this virtual Job Shadow and what platform they would prefer to use. Um, so there is a small percentage of you guys that will be involved in um, group job shadows, but we'll work with you um, outside of this to arrange that just because certain industries received a lot of student interest and we didn't necessarily have a lot of matches for you. Um, but it's still going to be a very small group, maybe like three to four students in the um, virtual job shadow. Oops, hang on, someone just came in. So it's still going to be a relatively small group and obviously um, you know if you had a really great connection with your host maybe you could ask them to do a one-on-one -on -one outside of that group um, so it's really up to you um, but most of you will have just one match you'll work with them one-on-one -on -one to figure out a day and time that works best for you um, so also another person um, also before the shadow you're going to want to do some preparation. You're going to want to prepare some questions to ask them. Um, and then you can always ask them if there's an agenda for the virtual job shadow or if it's going to be more of an informational interview. Um, obviously, if there's something specific you want to learn about or you want to see or, you know, maybe there's another person at the company you'd be interested in connecting with, feel free to ask that to your match. I mean, um, they might be relatively flexible. They might be working in their office. We're not sure. Um, so it's important to just clarify what you want to see, what you are interested in being involved in. Um, so when you're sending the email, this is a template. And again, I'm gonna send out this PowerPoint so you don't need to take notes or anything. So, you know, you're gonna say, dear Mr. or Ms., um, my name is whatever. I'm a student at Sacred Heart University, matched with you through the job shadow program. I'm currently majoring in blank and have an interest in blank. And then, you know, this is where you would kind of maybe say, oh, I know your company is involved in a new initiative. I'd love to learn more about that. Or, 
Um, maybe you could say if it's possible, I'd love a virtual tour of the facility, something like that, um, if it's interesting to you. And then let them know your availability. And then um, if there's any paperwork you need to fill out um, and then, you know, just close it out. So really straightforward, just making that initial connection. Um, keep in mind the people that you're matched with, they are working professionals, they're very busy. So they might not respond right away. Um, usually we say send an email, give it a week. If you don't hear anything, time to do a follow-up. And if you still don't hear anything from that follow-up, then rope either myself or Natalie in and we'd be happy to make sure you get connected. Um, and also, sorry, Corey, I just want to oh. throw one more thing in. Um, based on for scheduling your shadow, the hosts in their application, they chose weeks and days that worked the best for them. You will be provided that with your match information. So just be conscious of that when you send them your availability. Please send them your availability within the weeks that they chose. Um, if you have conflicts those weeks or you have issues on those days, um, you know, feel free to, to work with them and let them know, you know, I know that um, these weeks work best for you, but based on my schedule, can we see if there's another time? I'm sure they'll be flexible, but we did ask them to submit time. So just try to be conscious of that when, when you're reaching out to them. Yeah, and um, just keep in mind that all the t days and times that they provided are taking place over your winter break. So we're assuming you'll have a little bit more free time. And we were also conscious of like the certain holiday days. So we tried not to make it like obviously like during Christmas and New Year's, you know. Um, so hopefully you'll have enough availability. I, I think you all will. Um, and yeah, it shouldn't be any in any issue in scheduling, but it's only it's only an hour or two. Um, yeah. I, we'll we'll get into that too. Yeah. But um, it's so it's low commitment. It, yeah, low commitment. Yeah. So once you have a day and time schedule, the, your next step is really to prepare. So we want you to research the company and your host. Feel free to you know um, Google the company name, see if they've been in any news articles lately check out your host LinkedIn history, see where they were working before. Um, it's always interesting just to look at that stuff anyway, but it's also gonna help shape the questions you want to ask them. So most of your virtual job shadows are gonna look like an informational interview, which is literally where you're just interviewing someone to get information. Um, here are just some of the benefits of informational interviewing. Um, you're gonna get firsthand relevant information about working within a particular field or industry or position. Um, you're going to maybe find out about career paths that you didn't even know existed for your major. Um, you're going to get tips and insider knowledge about how to prepare for and land your first career position. Um, you're going to learn about what it's like to work at a certain organization. And ultimately, it's networking, which is so important in this day and age. I mean, I'm sure you'll all want a job or an internship eventually. This is a great stepping stone. Because even though if the, your matches company doesn't have any open jobs or internships at this time, doesn't mean they'll never have them. Um, and if you, you know, nurture that relationship with your match, maybe connect them on LinkedIn, stay in touch, send them an email like a couple times a year. Um, you know, eventually when they do have a job or an internship opening and you submit an application, you already have an insider connection. Um, so it's just, it's a great networking practice and um, you just don't know what it could lead to. So when you are conducting your informational interview, be sure to bring your list of questions and take notes. Um, obviously, before you jump right into the questions, give a little overview of yourself, your education, where you know your work background, maybe you've already done an internship, maybe you um, do some volunteer work that's relevant, maybe you're involved in something on campus that you'd like to share with them. Um, you know, it's, it's just having a nice conversation and be prepared to kind of take the reins of the informational interview, you know, um, but let the conversation flow naturally and encourage them to do most of the talking. Um, then you can always ask your host if you can contact them again in the future with other questions or if you can connect with them on LinkedIn. I think that's always great. So now you're probably wondering what questions do I even ask them? So you want to be sure to pick questions that are appropriate for your target career field and the stage of decision making you're in. So if you're maybe, you know, at the very beginning, you're just learning more about the industry, you know, feel, ask, feel free to ask very general questions. But if you are a senior, you're getting ready to apply to jobs, you can ask about application processes, you know, 
Um, you can ask for advice about how to make sure your application package is seen um, in this field. So it, it'll really depend on the information you're looking for. So these are just, oops, sorry. These are just some sample questions. Um, these are all very general and would probably work in almost any industry. So again, I'll send this PowerPoint out to you. So don't worry about jotting it down. But um, you know, it's just really, you can ask anything as long as it's appropriate, but you know, how does your job affect your general lifestyle? Um, how relevant is your work to your undergraduate major? How did you begin in this career? I mean, all questions that I think would, um, you know, give you really great information about what you're pursuing. And a lot of the hosts, um, most, the majority of the hosts are alumni. Mm -hmm. um, so feel free to ask them about their time at Sacred Heart. Um, even if it's not necessarily relevant to their career, but you can say like, what were you involved in at Sacred Heart? How did Sacred Heart prepare you for your job? Um, feel free to engage in those conversations too. Um, because hopefully one day when you're alumni, you will love Sacred Heart just as much as these alumni did when they were students. So they love to talk about that as well. Mm -hmm. So that can help keep the conversation going also. Yeah, and most of you will already have something in touch with your alum, you know, being that you're both pioneers. So I don't know, it's, it's, it'll be fun. Um, so anyway, these are just some sample questions more. Um, but obviously do your own research, you know, because you might have some more specific questions about the company they work for or their actual position, so. Now, just some general guidelines about the program, and this first one is the most important. So if any of you take anything away from this session, just please maintain communication with myself and Natalie. Um, let us know when you've set a shadow date or if you're having trouble contacting your host. So you'll let us know if you set a date when you fill out that Google form, so no need to let us know before then. Um, but if you're having trouble contacting your host, please let us know. We're happy to um, try and get you connected. And then, just some more basic guidelines for when you actually do conduct your virtual um, job shadow. You wanna be on time, even with the virtual shadows. So maybe log on to whatever platform you're using a minute or two early. You don't need to be any earlier than that. Obviously respect the privacy of your host and anyone else you're gonna speak with. Um, dress in professional attire appropriate for your assigned shadow. I know this seems silly if you're in your room, but um, you know, maybe don't be laying on your bed, um, you know, try and find like a neutral background you can use. Um, you know, you don't want anything too distracting in your video and you want to like look the part too. So throw on like a nice top. I'm not saying you have to like wear a suit, but maybe just, you know, with something appropriate. Um, and then you want to be sure to stay engaged. You know, um, I know it's hard. We're all um, going through Zoom fatigue right now, but um, just try and stay connected as much as you can through a screen and, you know, ask your questions, ask follow-up questions. Um, and then, of course, send a thank you note to your host following your virtual shadow. This can be either through email or if you want to try and connect with them on LinkedIn, that's a great little message to um, connect with them. Um, and then here are some possible job shadow activities. So again, if something on this list looks interesting to you, be sure to mention it into your first email to your host. So these are just some possibilities. Maybe you'll get an overview of the company, the industry and the job. You might participate in a virtual meeting. Maybe you'll get a tour of the facilities if they're working on ground, or maybe they even have a prepared video for you. Um, you know, just be sure to ask for what you're looking for out of this experience. So going back to communication, um, this is how important it is. It gets its own slide. So ultimately, Natalie and I just want to know what's going on. Um, you know, if you all of a sudden decide to um, like drop out, and for, you know, please just keep us in the loop. Um, if you fail to communicate and keep us updated, um, it's going to kind of reflect poorly on the school, on myself and on Natalie, which um, we really want to avoid doing because the relationship we have with our alums um, is very important to the school and to us. So um, we just wanna try and give them a really good impression of this program, of you guys as students of the school. So um, it's just so important to keep us updated. And, you know, just keep in mind, like if you kind of, you know, say you're gonna participate in this and then kind of drop off the face of the earth, um, you know, it's going to be hard to recommend you to future recruiters or employers, like if you ask the career development team for recommendation, because, you know, in the past, you kind of showed us maybe you weren't so great at communicating. So 
really just keep in mind like how you act in this program is a reflection on you on the school and us so it's just so important to keep that open communication so 48 hours um, from this point i want you all to take the next 48 hours to decide if this opportunity is right for you i know you might be sitting there thinking well i don't have my match information how can i know if this is right for me um, we're just going to kind of ask that you put your faith in us and um, commit to participating in this program because literally it's going to be like maximum three hours out of your life. It's really small commitment. Um, and we did go through and make these matches by hand. We read all of your applications. We read all the alums applications and we really tried to match people, you know, based on your interests, based on your major. Um, so all your matches will be relevant but it might be a little outside of the box. And I'll give you an example. So we had, a, um, we had an alum apply who um, has a degree in education and now she works like writing curriculum and creating curriculum. So more like on the corporate side of education and maybe you're an education major and you thought, no, I've, o I've always wanted to go into teaching and you get matched with this person, just keep an open mind because you never know, you might hear her job description and think, okay, that might be a better fit for me than teaching. We're just asking you to keep an open mind to this um, because they are all relevant matches. We can promise you that. Um, but yeah, just keep an open mind. It's low commitment. Um, anyway, so. And also, oh, you, you know, the these alums and hosts, we do have a couple parent hosts and we do have some members of the Sacred Heart community that want to give back through this program. And the way that they're giving back is they're giving back their time they raised their hands and said, hey, I want to do this. Nobody was forced to do this. They applied on their own. Um, so just like you'll be receiving your match information next week, they will be receiving theirs. So I will be emailing all of the hosts saying, congratulations, you've been matched. Same, similar to what you guys have received and say you are matched with XYZ student. This is their year. This is their major, et cetera. You will hear from them in the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. So now if you drop out, don't communicate with us or decide after you receive your match, like, oh no, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Now we have to go back to the host and, and say, well, they're not interested anymore. We'll see what we can do. Mm -hmm. Those hosts may not raise their hands again in the future. So like Corey said, have confidence in this program. They all align with your interests. It may not be a perfect match. It may not be something that you ever thought of in your career but you will learn a lot. And I, I feel very grateful to get to work with all of these hosts. And the example that Corey gave you earlier, um, her job title is instructional designer. Mm. And when I spoke to her, cause I said, Hey, you got to give me a little bit more about what your job is so we can find a match for you. And when she explained her job to me, I was blown away because I had no idea that there was a corporate side of education. Mm. I, she has, traveled the world because of this job you know it is such a unique and interesting job that i would have never thought of so we we like we have alums that are doing some really cool things and we we really try to let you guys think outside of the box through this program so like corey said i really want to reiterate that if it doesn't seem like a perfect match don't make that an excuse to drop out yeah keep an open mind keep an open mind talk to them because you will learn something new even if it's some even if you learn something that makes you say okay that was great but it's not something that i want to do in the future that's important mm -hmm. when i was in school it was important for me to do things to learn that that's not what i wanted to do mm -hmm. with my future just as important as learning what you do want to do yep, so absolutely um, yeah good point i love that okay so um Obviously, if you um, have any questions or concerns, you can reach out to myself or Natalie. Um, I know we've been emailing you a lot lately, so I apologize, but um, you have our email. So, um, and you know, we, I guess we can open up now if you guys have any questions too. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, Feel free to unmute or write in the chat and we can go off questions in the chat as well. Um, again, if you don't have any questions, feel free to drop off the call. Um, we're, we're done with our PowerPoint. I'll send it all to you so you have it in your email. Um, but yeah, are there any questions? We'll probably hang on here. Okay, here. Oh, how many times do we meet our match? That's a good question. Just once, unless, so here's, I never like to say, never say never, right? So 
Um, so you are going to have your alum applied um, knowing that you would be meeting at least once, but if you happen to have a great conversation, um, you don't know what the alum might be willing to do. Um, they could say, "Why not? If you're if you feel comfortable, come on site, visit our office." Or they might say, um, oh, "I'd be happy to speak with you again in the future." Um, so really, it's going to be up to the host. They committed for this one-time meeting, but um, they could definitely be open to meeting more. Um, and also, we have had students that participated in the job shadow program get internships from this experience. So I just can't say it'll be a one-time meeting for sure. I don't know. It'll really depend on, on the connection, on your match. Um, so, good question. Are there any others? It's, it's really a fun experience, guys. And, um, you know, we have such a long winter break this year. Um, so I think it's something fun to do over winter break. You know, you're taking a step towards building your future, even if it's, again, not exactly what you thought. Also, just going off of that with networking, you never know who knows who. So let's say you meet with um, a match and it's not exactly what you want. It's still in the same industry. That person might know someone else that you could talk to that might be more, you know, in line. Like if you're having a conversation with your host and you say, you know, thank you for talking about that. That's really interesting to me. I'm also more interested in X, Y, Z. They could be like, oh, let me connect you to so-and-so. They do that. You just, it's just like, you just don't know. And I can give an example on that too, because in the past, um, that, that exact thing has happened where we matched a student with a lawyer um, and she had a great conversation with this alum. And I remember the alum emailed me and said, hey, I had a great conversation with X student, but they're really more interested in this. And that's what my colleague does. Is it okay if I connect them? And I said, of course it is. That would be wonderful. Um, so definitely communicate that because they could work with somebody that does something different. And now you're just expanding your network. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? So how it'll go from here, I'll email all you guys the PowerPoint. You know, we want you to take the next couple of days to think about things before you like officially commit. Then you'll get your match information this upcoming week. And from there, you know, it'll start. And I know Corey talked about this earlier, um, but since it is virtual, I know, I know it's a Saturday morning and I know a lot of you probably don't want to have your cameras on and that's okay for, for this purpose. Oh, but yeah. when you are on Zoom with the host, please make sure you have your cameras on and you're attentive um, because a lot of the shadows, like Corey said, a couple might be group but most of them are gonna be one-on-one -on -one, and it's very awkward if I have my camera on as a host and the one student doesn't. Um, I've been in meetings like that and it makes it a little uncomfortable. It's so, so awkward. <laughs> very awkward. So just make sure you're prepared for that. Um, they're gonna wanna see you and communicate yeah. with you. Um, so just just keep that in mind as well as, as you plan where you're going to take your meeting from and all of that. Good point. All right, so if no one has any other questions, I'm gonna end the meeting um, because I'm sure we all have other things we'd rather be doing. Um, I'll give it like maybe one more minute for any last minute questions. I'm gonna stop recording. Um, and if any other, if, if like an hour or two from now, you decide, oh, I, I did have a question, mm -hmm. just feel yeah. free to email us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're usually pretty quick to respond. Um, I mean, I, I'm available this weekend. I can respond to any questions. Um, otherwise, we'll get back to you on Monday. Um, but don't don't ever hesitate to, even if you think it's a stupid question, because there's no stupid question. So feel free to email us at any time. All right. Well, thank you, guys.